Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation Sats Week 6 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been sitting my Sats revision quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions, and they're the three questions that you can see in front of you now. But they're not just any three questions. I've chosen the three worst answered questions by those thousands of students from this particular quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So challenge number one, can you get each of the questions correct? Challenge number two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered one is? And then I wonder for each of these questions, can you identify the most popular choice of wrong answer? And then, and this is where it gets really tricky, can you explain why other students may have chosen this wrong answer? And then finally, imagine you were sat next to somebody who was convinced that their answer was right, but you were convinced your answer was right. How would you convince them? How would you explain to them not only that you're right, but in a nice way that they're wrong? So what I advise you do now is you pause the video, work your way through these three questions and my five challenges, and then when you're ready, hit play, and we'll go through the answers together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, right, let's go for it. So, for a bit of drama, I'll reveal these in reverse order. So the least worst answered question out of these three is this question here, the fractions question. So what's going on here? One seventh of 42 equals something divided by seven. Now actually, as long as you take your time and read the question, this is actually pretty straightforward because let's have a think. If we want to find one seventh of 42, that means that we want to divide or share 42 into seven equal parts and we want to know what one of those parts is worth. Well, to do that, what I would do is I'd start with my 42 and I'd divide it by seven to share it into those seven equal parts. So actually, that's just what that question's saying. One seventh of 42 is something divided by seven. Well, that something is 42. Now that's a strange one, right? Because that's not too bad. And indeed, if I show you the data behind this, 61% of students correctly identified that the answer to this is A, 42. But look at that. 27% of students thought that the answer was B, six. Can you see where six comes from? Why might a student think the answer is six? Well, let's have a look at a real life student explanation. I know that these questions, you divide the denominator and times by the numerator. And then a bit of a personal info. I can remember this because Mr. Adams from year five taught me. So this student has kind of gone into autopilot and thought, okay, well, when we work out a seventh, we do 42 divided by seven and that equals six. But of course, that's not quite what the question's asking. It's asking to essentially balance an equation. Look, the left-hand side has got to be the same as the right-hand side. And the way to do that, one seventh of 42 is just exactly the same as 42 divided by seven. Okay, let's have a look at the second least worst answered question. And it is this one here. In class six, there are four boys to every two girls. Write the ratio of boys to girls in simplest form. So when we get ratio questions, I just like to set out exactly the information we've got here. So we want to write our final answer in the ratio. We want boys to girls. It's always important with these questions just to make sure you've got it the right way around. It doesn't say girls to boys, it wants the ratio of boys to girls. Now what information do we get in the question? In class six, there are four boys for every two girls. So the ratio of boys to girls is four to two. Is that our answer? No, because there's one extra little twist. Write the answer in its simplest form. So for simplest form, I'm looking for the highest uh, common factor that four and two have, so I can divide by that. And I think that factor is two. I can divide four by two. I can divide two, oh, sorry, I can divide two by two. Four divided by two gives me two. Two divided by two gives me one. So I think my answer, the ratio of boys to girls is two to one, which is D. Let's have a look if we're right. Yes, we are, but look at that. Only 58% of students got the answer right. What's the most common wrong answer? Well, there it is, A, four to two. Where does four to two come from? Well, four to two isn't wrong, but the people who've put that have missed this final bit. They've not written their answer in its simplest form. And indeed, if you read the explanations here, they're beautiful explanations, 
but you've got to read the question and make sure you finish that question off. In its simplest form, it isn't four to two, it's two to one. Which brings us to our final question, the worst answered one, and it is this question here, and this is a bit of a stinker. So let's have a look at this. What is the area of this square in centimeters? So I'm gonna do a rough drawing of this square. So what do we know? We know it's one meter square. And all these answers are in centimeters. So let's make sure we can convert them from meters to centimeters. So if this is one meter square, and as long as we know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter, well then these two squares, and if I put them side by side, hopefully this will make sense. One meter square is just one meter by one meter. But as long as we know that one meter is 100 centimeters, well then we can see that these two squares must be exactly the same. One meter by one meter, that's one meter square. 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Now, we know to find area of squares or rectangles, we do base multiplied by height or height multiplied by base. So there, just as we have one multiplied by one gives me one, I'm gonna to have to do the same here to get the area of this. So I'm gonna to have to do 100, which is my base, multiplied by 100, which is my height. So the way I do these, I say one multiplied by one is one, and then I've got zero, 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 zero. 0, 0, 0, 0. And I like to write that out with the spaces in just so I can get my head around it. I think that's the same as 10,000 centimeters squared, which if I look there, that's one of my answers, B, 10,000 centimeters squared. But that's a little counterintuitive. It's a little confusing. How on earth can one meter squared be 10,000 centimeters squared? Well, one way to think about it is if you think this one meter squared is made up of loads of these tiny little centimeters squared. Because you can have a hundred of these going all the way along the bottom. Then you can have another hundred of these going all the way up this side like this. And once you count up all of these, you're going to end up with a hundred multiplied by a hundred, ten thousand of them. Now watch what happens when I show you how students got on with this. Look at that. Only 36% of students were able to get this question correct. The majority of students, or well, more students, thought that the answer was A, 100 centimeters squared. And you can see immediately where this is coming from, right? Because if you know that one meter is 100 centimeters, it seems logical that one meter squared would just be 100 centimeters squared. But as we saw on our previous slide, if we do this drawing down here and we just compare them, we can see that actually there's a lot more centimeters squared than 100 in a meter squared. So it's no surprise when we read these answers, it's all students talking about that they know that there's 100 centimetres in a metre. So that's the worst answered question, and it's pretty badly answered. So how did you get on with those three? Don't worry if you struggled, as we've seen, thousands of students all around the country have struggled with these. The important thing is to confront these tricky questions and to see if we can understand them together. Um, if you want more of these, if you hop on to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, there's 20 of these that you can try and it'll mark it yourselves for, uh, mark, mark them, you see, it will mark your answers for you. And if you're a teacher and you want to set these up for your students so that they can work through them and you, uh, they, it'll mark it for you and you'll be sent in the results and all that, it's all completely free. Easiest place to go is ed.co.uk um, and find the revision schemes of work. And if you want help getting your students on the system, if you send an email to hello at ed.co.uk, attaching a spreadsheet with your students' names and their class names, one of our team will help you get set up. Hope you found that useful, and I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care, and bye for now.